We've talked about product photography and videography before, and I love those projects because they're such awesome opportunities to be experimental and really let your creativity shine. My name is Tom, this is The Enthusiasm Project, and today I'm in this weirdly lit situation to share with you something I've been doing lately to sort of level up my product photography and videography, and maybe you've noticed it in some of my more recent videos. There's also this logo here on the computer that I animated, which I'm pretty proud of, so I put it here just to show it off. So the reason that this shot looks so strange is because it's not really set up or lit for me to talk to the camera. It's set up for some product photography. And actually this is not a sponsored video, but it was this video from the Artlist YouTube channel that gave me this idea. This is all about product photography and using a display or a TV as a background. So if you watch The Mandalorian, which is an excellent show and I highly recommend it, this is a very small micro budget version of how they made that series, which was to put the actors in the middle of a studio environment that had screens all around them. And instead of using green screen or building actual sets, they just projected the locations on the screens behind the actors and the way that they mix it in with cameras, it looked like they were really in those places most of the time. It was, it was really impressive. And this is kind of a version of that. We're not trying to make our products look like they're in different locations, but we are trying to add just a little different level of creativity to the stuff that we're filming. I really recommend the Artlist YouTube channel. It's a great source of some info and behind the scenes stuff. I, again, this is not sponsored, but I do really like Artlist. It was the first actual investment I made in my YouTube channel. If you're looking for royalty-free music, there is a link in the description that'll get you two free extra months. I also made a video comparing Artlist to Epidemic and why I chose to actually end up using both of those services. So if you're looking for royalty-free music to go along with your product photography, check out that video and it kind of explains the differences in the licensing between the different platforms. But moving on to this right here, the setup that I have, if I get rid of the Artlist video, basically is just my computer display, this black glass monitor stand. I'm using this old Canon AE-1 as my prop for right now. And then I've also got all of my portable handheld battery operated lights over there because playing with lighting is really fun. I have my Falconize RX-18 overhead with the grid on it to direct some soft overhead lighting. And I've got my 6D Mark II on the tripod with the slider. Normally I would use the EOS R for these kind of shots, but for the purpose of this video, we'll be using the 6D over here. You can use pretty much any screen for this method, whether it's a computer monitor or like a television. I haven't had any issues or encountered any issues with any kind of flickering or anything like that. It's worked really, really well for me. This display specifically is from B&H Photo in New York City, and I like using it because it reminds me of my trip to New York City where I went with one of my friends and we actually had a pretty hard time deciding on which of the Broadway shows we wanted to go to because there are so many. He wanted to go to Display and I wanted to go to that play. Display. So the tricky thing is this is a 34 inch display which is great when I'm working on it but for this type of project it's actually a little narrow and so I've had a hard time if I'm using my 24 millimeter lens with keeping the edges of the display out of the frame. So I actually do prefer to use the 24 to 105 zoomed in all the way to 105. And that gives you nice background compression, nice background blur, pulls the subject out from the background, but then it also lets you keep the image on screen in the entire background. And then basically, I know this is sort of an awkward position, <laughs> um, but I like to just lower my display so it's below the glass table. Just because of the height of these things, I have to rest my display on these two ND filter boxes. And then as far as what you put on the background, it's really up to you and your creativity. Ultimately in a dream world, I would love to film my own like weird abstract art things and put them on the background. It would just be kind of fun, but I don't have the time to do that at the moment. So I've just been using some royalty free stock footage, which works very, very well. You can put a still image up on screen and it will just be a colorful background or you can use moving images. Like I've got this one here, which is sort of colorful squares. And if I pause it, it won't pause. Why won't you pause? If I pause it, it makes a great still backdrop. But if I play it just on a loop, it works really, really well for product backdrops and you've probably even seen this in a few thumbnails because this technique makes for some really like eye-catching thumbnails that pop out a lot when you see those in a YouTube feed they're really eye-catching and I think it's a great way to get people interested in your video and to click on your video 
And then I like to put my light directly overhead because as we talked about in my product photography B-roll video, I really like the look of soft overhead lighting, but it's also important to be sure you don't have your light source face directly at your display. Luckily, this is a matte screen, so it doesn't reflect too much. But if you have lights in front of it, you will get those reflections and it kind of kills the effect. So you typically need to position your lights above or to the side of the display. Another thing that's actually kind of awesome is since the display is illuminating your subject from behind, you do find yourself getting this really nice kind of rim of light, this backlight effect. I noticed when I started using this technique that the lighting in my videos and my photos started looking a lot better. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, just the fact there's a screen illuminating your stuff from behind. And as I said, I use this black monitor stand here. I'll put a link to this. This is pretty inexpensive. It's like $20, but I like the black glass because it's reflective. So if you position this right, and you play around with the camera angles enough, you can make it really almost look like your subject is floating in this interesting looking world because you've got the image happening on the screen behind you and you also have the reflection right here. Very important, as you can see with my fingerprints before you film, be sure to use a little bit of cleaner and just make sure everything that you're going to put on camera looks as good as possible. It's a good idea too to dust off whatever it is that you're gonna be photographing or taking videos of. So now we are almost ready to start filming. It's a pretty easy setup, honestly. I like putting my camera on a slider so I can get not only pans and tilts, but also some nice side to side motion, which gives a really cool parallax effect. If this background is moving and the camera's moving, it gives your shot this dynamic layer that just doesn't exist otherwise. And I really love the way that that looks. So if I'm ready to film, okay. If I'm ready to film, I will take the product, position it how I want so it looks as good as possible. I've lowered my overhead light so it's a little closer to the subject. I've got two lights coming in on the side because if I don't have a side light, then it's very dark and dramatic, which could actually be cool. But if we're pretending that we're filming this camera, I'm gonna position this light off to the side where it's going to reflect in the lens. So it's going to bring that camera to life a little bit. And then we just get the slider going. And as the slider's going, I just slowly pan the camera to keep it centered in the frame. And you can do multiple passes. You can get closer or further away. Maybe you don't want to film your whole subject. So like right now I'm focusing on the AE1 logo and slowly panning down. Now, one more thing to mention is you don't have to just do side to side shots. If you're using a slider, I like to use pushes and pulls. So if you frame up your shot a little bit, and then we get the slider going, make sure my focus is where I want it. And now I've got this great push in, which would be an awesome way to start a video. In fact, this is how I started my EOS R camera review is almost this exact same shot. Except one of the things I did was I turned off my key light so that the frame was dark. So not only was the camera pushing in, but at just the right moment, I turned on the light and then when I edited, I matched that together with the beat of a song. And I love the way that it came out in the final version. The EOS R is arguably one of Canon's most important releases in recent memory. Now two other caveats I should warn you about before you jump into this. The first is that it's important to make sure you adjust the brightness of your display if you want your subject and your display to be exposed properly, you might need to dim the display. I usually have this one set to about 75 or 80% brightness when I'm working on it. But when I'm filming something like this, I usually turn it down to like 25 or 30%. The second thing is, if you look at the shot we have right now, it looks great. But one thing you'll notice is you can see the edge of this little monitor stand. So one way to deal with that is to of course, raise your camera up. But sometimes what I end up doing is actually just tilting this down. Since I have it on these boxes, I just rest the front leg off of the box and the back leg on the box. And that ends up giving a pretty decent result. And now, so we clean it up a bit. And now I'm much more able to see the subject on the surface without seeing the edge of the table. The problem though, as I'm sure you can imagine is, very tough to get things to actually stay on a slanted surface. You kind of just got to play around with it. This camera is very heavy, but if I were doing something that was maybe a little more tacky, it might just stay on its own 
which would let me get the shot that I am looking for. But of course, you can just be extra creative too. It's where it's never a bad idea to have a roll of gaff tape. If you happen to watch one of the recent mic comparison videos that I did, I had to use this technique because the microphone is so tough to see. And so I just folded over some of the gaff tape, put it on the microphone, and then basically just taped the microphone to the table. Now, as you can see in our camera shot, it actually looks pretty good. I was able to get a pretty decent effect. And now we can focus in on our microphone and get the shot that I want without seeing the edge of the table. And I think it looks pretty great. Now, one of the problems with doing it that way is that I did have this microphone come undone and fall off the table once or twice. Luckily, this is $14, so it wasn't the end of the world, but if you're doing something that's a little pricier or a little more valuable, just be careful when you're using this method. That's kind of what I'll say. Now, before you get really excited about jumping in and using this technique, let me give you a quick warning. What happened to me was that I found the results were looking so good, I wanted to do this all the time. And I even thought, hey, maybe I should just film all of my product B-roll this way. I have to do one little setup. I can change the background super easily. I don't have to have a physical space like when I'm filming in the rest of the room here. I would advise against that. And this is a great tool to have in your arsenal that you can utilize when you need it. But the fact that you don't use it all the time makes it more impactful when you choose to use it. So have a lot of fun and experiment with it, but resist the urge to use it constantly in every single thing. But it is a lot of fun and I think you'll really enjoy experimenting with it like I have, and you'll put your own spin on it and add your own layers to this technique. And if you wanna know more about leveling up your product photography skills, check out my B-roll tutorial because it is a great way to dive in and make things look even better than they already do.